so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. I want to talk to you from a passage of scripture found in the Gospel of John, where our Lord and Savior Jesus declared, I am the resurrection and the life. Let us pray. Father, may your word go forth in clarity. May it reach every single person that you are sending it to reach and may it accomplish and not return void every single purpose that you are also sending it to do. So Lord, I ask that your anointing would flow in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. The Gospel of John, the 11th chapter, I want to begin reading in your hearing from verse 21. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Here we have a grieving sister, one who, you know, is looking at the fact that her brother is dead, which a lot of people do. We look at what we can see rather than looking through the eyes of faith. Sometimes when you're in that moment, when you're grief, you know, struck by grief, then it's kind of hard to see and remember all of the things that God has done for you and how many times he has already brought you out. Because if you remember in the Bible, it lets us know that these were Jesus's good friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And the Bible lets us know that it was this Mary who had anointed Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And Mary and Martha, you know, in their doubt, you know, they began to tell Jesus in so many words, you know, where were you, Lord? We know you have the power. We know that my brother didn't have to go through this. And they began to wonder and question why. And so we're going to see in these verses how Martha is having dialogue with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 22 says, but even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you, you know, still showing a little bit of disappointment. She said, but even I know, you know, that whatever Jesus acts of the father, the father would grant it to him. And here's Jesus response in verse 23. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. You know, Jesus got right to the point, you know, don't doubt only have faith, you know, believe that your brother will rise again. And here's what Martha said in verse 24. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Um, I know that when everybody else gets up, Jesus, I know that Lazarus is going to get up again. But let's go back to why you weren't here, Jesus. You know, Martha's still going back, still not hearing what Jesus is saying. You know, and again, sometimes when you're in that moment, when you're grief stricken, you cannot really think straight. You can't hear what God is saying. That's why you have to sit down, get off quiet by yourself so you can hear what God is saying, so he can begin to minister to you. And then this is what Jesus said back to Martha, verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. See, Jesus was letting her know to know Jesus is to know resurrection and life. And to have Jesus is to have resurrection and life. Je didn't Jesus say in the gospel of John, the 14th chapter and the sixth verse, he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the father except through me. So Jesus was already what she needed, but that God may be glorified and that Jesus may be glorified. You know, these things were allowed to happen to bring God glory. Going on in the text, Jesus said in verse 26, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And that's a question for you today too. Do you believe, hallelujah? Do you believe that God has planned for you great things that, you know, eyes cannot see, ears have not heard? Do you believe 
that he is the resurrection? Do you believe that he is the life? Do you believe if you give your life to him and trust in him, you too will never die? Hallelujah. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Glory to his name. Verse 27 says, she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God, who is to come into the world. Martha's faith quickly returned back, quickly got a perspective of who she was talking to, the one that was able to raise her brother from the dead. And I thought that this was pretty interesting story because if you know anything about um, what was going on at the time when Jesus, just before Jesus came to Bethany to where, you know, Lazarus was buried and where Mary and Martha was, um, the Jews didn't like Jesus very much and they wanted to kill him anyway because he had already raised Jairus' daughter and he had raised um, the widow's son. So this was his third resurrection. And it's said by commentators after this, this is when the Sanhedrin really sought to kill Jesus after this third miracle. Isn't that something? How the devil wants to shut up. How the devil wants to stop, you know, the miraculous power of God. But nothing can stop what God has planned. Nothing can stop what God wants to do. And as we read on and in your, your reading time, I would admonish you to read the rest of the story. How Jesus raised Lazarus up from the dead and he was glorified and many glorified God because of the wonders that Jesus had done. Hallelujah. And I'll conclude by going back to our text verse 25 where Jesus said to her I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me though he may die he shall live hallelujah have you trusted Jesus today have you given him your life great things are waiting for you when you put your trust in God when you say yes to the one who loved you so much that he gave his life for you and now you can have life in him I never want to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord you know in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now it demands that you know who you are who you belong to and where you are going and so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. 
In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.